In this video, we're going to talk about types of matrices. So let's put down some matrices on the screen. We'll try classifying them. So we look at some types of matrices. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at matrices and group them based on what makes them special. So here's the first question. What makes these two matrices special? What's there in these two that's not there in the rest of them? Think about it. Well, both of them have only one row and that's what makes them special. These types of matrices are called row matrices. These matrices have only one row. Or you can say that all the elements are along this one single row. What makes these two special? All the elements are along the column. They have only one column. These types of matrices are called column matrices. Now, what makes all of these special? What makes all the matrices inside this blue box special? What's there in these matrices that's not there in these five? Pause the video, think about it. Okay. Now, if you look closely, you'll see squares forming. This is a two by two. This is a three by three. So all of these are squares and that's what makes them special. This is a three by four. It has three rows and four columns, but all of these have the same number of rows and columns. These are called square matrices. So if you have same number of rows and columns, you'll call it a square matrix. But there are even more special square matrices. Look at this green box. These matrices are special square matrices. Now pause the video. Think about what makes them extra special. Okay. Now if you glance over these matrices, you'll see there are a lot of zeros, a lot more zeros than you might find here. But that's not all. These zeros are in specific positions. If you look at them more closely, you'll see that all the elements except the ones on the diagonals are zeros. So look at this matrix. We have one, two, and six on the diagonal and every other element is zero. Here we have one and two on the diagonal. Every other element is zero. Here we have all fives on the diagonal. Every other element is zero. Now these matrices are called diagonal matrices. They're all square matrices, but all the elements that are not on the diagonal are zero. Now, one thing that you might ask is why is this one left out? Why are we not taking this as the diagonal matrix? Well, the reason is simple. In matrix world, we only consider an element to be on the diagonal if the row number and the column number match. This one is in the first row and second column. So row number is one and column number is two. They don't match, which means this is not on the diagonal. Same is the case here. This one is not on the diagonal. Whereas if you look at this, first row, first column, second row, second column, third row, third column, row number and column are match, which means all three are on the diagonal. So these are our diagonal matrices, but we're not done yet. There are even more special diagonal matrices. Look at this yellow box. What makes these matrices super extra special? Think about it. Okay. Well, the only difference is that this number is the same. Here we have one and two, one, two, six, but here we have all fives. Here we have all minus ones. So these numbers are the same. This makes these matrices more special than diagonal matrices. We call them scalar matrices. And we'll talk about why we call them scalar in an upcoming video. But to finish this process, let's make one more box. What's special about matrices inside this box? You might have figured this out. This constant is one in this case. Now these two are also scalar matrices, but the number that you put on the diagonal is just one here. You can't put anything else. And one has a close connection with the word identity. Hence, these are called identity matrices. Now there's one more type. If you have all the elements as zero, you call these matrices as zero matrices. You can have any number of rows or columns, but if the elements are all zero, this is called a zero matrix or sometimes also called the null matrix. Now, these are some basic types of matrices. And before we technically define them, let's also talk about one by one matrices. Matrices that have order one by one. Look at this one. This only has one element five. Would you call this a square matrix? Think about it. Well, yes, you would, because for it to be a square matrix, the number of rows and number of columns should match. This has one row and one column. One matches with one. This means this is a square matrix. And using the same logic, we can say that this is also a row matrix because it has only one row. This is also a column matrix 
because it has only one column. In fact, this is also a diagonal matrix. This element is in fact on the diagonal. And because there's only one element, we can also call it a scalar matrix, but this is not an identity matrix. For it to be an identity matrix, this number has to be one. So now that we've looked at all sorts of examples, let's now technically define these matrices. Let's start with this one. For a matrix to be a row matrix, the condition is on the order. A matrix which has the order one by n is called a row matrix. Here we have fixed the row number. We can only have one row. The number of columns can vary. So if you see something like one by five as an order, you can say that that's a row matrix. Similarly, for a matrix to be a column matrix, the number of columns are fixed. That's one. So the order is M by one. M could be any number, but the number of columns have to be one. Now, if you apply the same thing to square matrices, the order has to be N by N. Here, the number of rows and the number of columns should match. What about these three? Well, for these three, the condition is not on the order. The condition is on the elements. Pause the video. Try figuring out the conditions for elements for these three matrices. Okay, let's do this together. Let's talk about this matrix, the diagonal matrix. For a matrix to be a diagonal matrix, the elements should be only on the diagonal, which means if row number and the column number do not match, then the element has to be zero. And that's the condition. If I is not equal to J, which means the row number is different than the column number, then the element becomes zero. So this is the condition for it to be a diagonal matrix. Note that it also satisfies the condition for square matrix. The number of rows and columns should match. And on top of that, if for an element, the row number and column number do not match, then that element is zero. On top of these two conditions, we have one more condition for scalar matrix, and that's this one. If the row number and column number match, if you're on the diagonal, then you have to be a constant. A i j is equal to k. You can't have a different number for a different element. All these elements will be same. In this case, all of them are five. In this case, all of them are minus one. And finally, this constant becomes one when we're talking about identity matrices. So an identity matrix satisfies all four of these conditions. It is a square matrix. The number of rows and columns match. All the elements that are not on the diagonal are zero. All the elements that are on the diagonal are constant, are the same. And that constant is equal to one if we're talking about identity matrices. And for zero matrix, the condition is simple. All the elements are just zero, no questions asked, no room for discussion. So these combined with this generic one, which has the order M by N are some types of matrices that we'll see in the upcoming videos for this chapter.